episode of Weber State Weekly this week. We're a member of the Big Sky Podcast Network. I'm your host, Colby Peterson. Uh, on the show today, we've got uh, oh, the return of our signpost favorites. We've got sports editor Emily Miller back on the show. Emily, how was the uh, how was the summer for you? I'm good. I'm enjoying my one week of summer between uh, summer semester and fall. <laughs> Hey, man, hopefully it's not too hot in Utah. You can get outside. You can do whatever you want. Enjoy that one week. Right. Good. And also a returning champion. Simon, let's see the shirt. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Back in the saddle for us, Simon Morrison. It's been a few couple of months. Simon, but how you doing, man? You are getting ready for school next week as well? Yeah, I am. I am also getting for school, ready for school and stuff like that. I, uh, I made the – mistake but hopefully not a mistake in six months of taking summer semester and uh (laughs) yeah haven't been avoiding the heat very well my swamp cooler broke at work so that was uh yeah so (laughs) hopefully it was better today but yesterday no that was bad (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) well man i'll tell you i took a lot of summer semesters so it all works out man like it pays off so don't feel bad (laughs) well like we said at the top of the show folks this is a special episode of weaver state weekly and so we're talking with the hockey club tonight we've got club president andy georgia georgia yeah (laughs) and we've got club vp ryan fair bear faux bear it's okay close enough it's a tough one Ryan Faubert joining us tonight to talk a little bit about the club, man. I mean, this is one of the hoppinest clubs on campus. If you have ever had a chance to go to a Weber State hockey game, like, um, it's fun. And so we're here to talk about it a little bit tonight and uh, have these guys tell us a bit about it. So before we do all that, we want to encourage everybody to subscribe to the show. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all good places to get the show in your ears. It also streams live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, and then, of course, you can follow us on Instagram. We've got some content that we're going to be working on this week. We're going to be doing some football preview stuff. I've got some stuff in the works talking about Mickey Mental's offense at Notre Dame College outside of Cleveland. Folks have asked, like, was it good? We're going to try and answer that question. But follow us on social media, and you can get some of that content. And, of course, we've got our Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Weber State Weekly. Become a patron, help support us, and then hopefully uh, we will amass enough dollars to hopefully hire some student workers to help us expand our coverage of Weber State and uh and produce more content and social media to find its way to you through those channels so appreciate all those patrons who already support and um think about joining us so all right guys uh now that we've gone through kind of like the preliminary stuff let's talk a little bit about the club Uh, because like i said you guys are one of the best run clubs i think on campus um if there's a lot of hype you guys do a really good job i before we came in and started talking a little bit about how the media apparatus that you guys have that you guys produce is really, really good. So talk to us a little bit about kind of how does the club work, man, because you guys are able to achieve at a high level um, and it's really well run, but I mean, hockey, it's not, it's not scholarships. Uh, You guys do a fair bit of travel. Tell us how the hockey club works exactly. Yeah. So the hockey club started probably 30 years ago. So it's been, it's been at Weber for a long time. Our coaches are both former players so everything's like if you're a part of weber hockey you you stay at weber hockey like people love it you come here people stay here um so we're a club or a a student-run organization so me and brian we're working all summer we're working during the fall working during the spring to make sure the club runs properly um it's pretty much me brian and the coaches who run the entire club we don't have um any sort of people we pay we're all volunteer based. So Brian and I are out there in the trenches, kind of finding uh, sponsors, finding uh, refs. Our coaches help a lot with finding refs, scorekeepers, ice time, travel, buses, everything you can imagine for a, an athletics team. That's me, Brian, and the coaches. So it's Impressive. it's a lot of work between us four, but it we get it done. Yeah, <laughs> we find a way to figure it out. We just it's every year you kind of like have a changing of guards, like people. So this is my last year as the president. I'm graduating this year. So Brian's going to be running the team next year. And after Brian, Brian's going to have to find someone who's going to run the team. So yeah, you kind of just have to like keep changing, but you have to keep the tradition of like a well-run club. So it, it is hard, but every we have enough good people on our team to make it happen. And make it happen you do, man. I mean, like I said, you guys, you guys play tournaments in Colorado. You guys travel a fair bit and – 
Of course, there are also lots of games that get played at the ice sheet right next to the D. I mean, there's a lot to manage, but you guys seem to do it, especially with the constant turnover of guys graduating, moving on. That, that can be tough for a club, right? Like we saw the student section have a really strong club president a couple of years ago. And, you know, last last year or so, they haven't necessarily had that. And so they're looking to get exactly. back. And so you guys have been able to maintain that consistency, which I think is admirable, especially at a place like Weber State where people are busy, man. Yeah, for sure. There, I don't know. Brian, Brian is a really good – he's really good at, like, as, like, a president, you kind of have to, like, relegate um, certain situa- or certain duties and stuff. Brian does a great job of doing those, and he also relegates to – we have a, a secretary and a treasurer. So me and Brian kind of head up everything and then we relegate duties to them accordingly. And it really helps like since our coaches have been around it for 20 years now, they they really help us out doing all of it. So if we have questions, we can go to them. We don't have to go to the school every time or like our club sports manager. I'm sure they get sick of us because we're kind of I don't know we're we're ran a little differently than a lot of clubs because we've got a lot going on. So it's it's nice to have somebody that already knows what to do and we can fall back on. I hear that. So Emily or Simon, I mean, questions for Andy and Brian as we kind of like move through and talk a little bit about how the club functions and, it, and how it works. Yeah, um, how we kind of mentioned the student section at some games, they're not, it's not a super strong crowd, but it always seems like they're ready to go to the hockey games. What do you guys think uh, brings the fans to your games? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a good atmosphere. I mean, people enjoy hockey. Like when they go and see it, like we get a lot of people who have never seen hockey. Like they don't really know what it is. So like kind of have to explain it if you meet them. But I think being able to go to class and like meeting these other students and they're like, oh, I've never been to a hockey game. You can kind of sell them a little bit to go. And like students are the last couple of years, we haven't been able to have students in free. Because since we're a club, we have to make money as much as we can from wherever. But this upcoming year, we don't have to charge students. So I think that will definitely have an effect and impact and we can get a bigger student section. But yeah, that and people, people yeah. love hockey. People love fighting. People love hitting. People love that. Yep. Like when people well, ask, like, fun. you play hockey, they that's what they want. They want fights. They want hits. It's just it's just a fast paced game. Like and then people just yeah, people just love it. So I think. And the ability to like be crazy at the game, I think that draws a lot of people in as well. You know, you go to like, I don't know, I won't throw anyone under the bus, but it is, it is a good, it's a good atmosphere for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite things about watching you guys' games um, is I think the atmosphere is awesome uh, with the people that do come. They're, they're always really intense and passionate about the game, which is fun. Um, and one of my favorite things is too, um, you guys aren't affiliated with the NCAA. So you're kind of like um, playing tournaments and being in those schedules and everything. And so you play a lot of in-state games. You play against Utah State. That was one of your big ones last season. You know, you have the ability to play against some of these teams. Who do you kind of consider as your rivals during a season? And is there anyone this season that you're looking at facing most? Yeah, for sure. I think I think Utah State is, is our biggest rival. I think it would go both ways. I think we're their biggest rival. When we go up there, they, they, they have a crazy – crazy section of fans they they probably put in get two to three thousand people every single game we play them it's standing room only in a big arena you got people yelling at you you got people chirping you in the penalty box you got people have stuff thrown at you and like while you're walking (laughs) through the tunnel it's crazy people people hate weber state there and when people come down here people hate utah state so i think utah state is a huge rivalry as well yeah utah state definitely i think we're so for like who we're looking forward to playing, obviously in-state games are always big, but UVU, like Utah Valley, the last couple of years hasn't been so good. But sadly, like BYU, their program got cut this past year. So a lot of guys have went to UVU. So I think that's going to be an exciting one for us just to see if they got better, like if we're going to have to, I don't know, play different against those guys because yeah, it hasn't been – I don't. I don't want to be mean, but like, hasn't been the biggest competition against them in the past. But I think that's going to change this year. And we, so, we had a player transfer there this year, so that's going to be yeah. more uh, a little bit extra. fire fuel the fire right there. So yeah. that'll yeah. be fun to watch. Yeah, and then like, so you said that they can transfer, um, so they could be in another university like BYU and transfer to UVU or Weber State for the hockey team and still go to that school. Is that 
Is that kind of what I'm understanding? No. So, so this year the BYU team folded. They it's it's really complicated. I really want to get into it, but so a lot of those players they want they want to continue playing hockey and go to school. So they all transferred to UVU. They're going to be going yeah. to school at UVU, and gotcha. they're going to be playing the hockey team. Yeah, there. yeah. They made a full transfer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess I could have made that more clear. My bad. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. That. That's a that's pretty surprising right there. That's cool though. They you know made that transfer right there to keep playing and yeah. Right. Yeah, people do a lot to keep playing hockey. Like I th- I think we have probably two or three in state players this year. Everybody else is from out of state. Um, people travel. People move cities that to play hockey at a decently high level. So it's it's a good it's a good school to go to, and we're we're competitive every year. So people want to come here. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. I think that's another thing big for us. Like as a club, we're willing to like have guys recruited to come in. And like a lot of people will come all the way to Utah. Like they've never even been here, but they'll come to play for Weber. A winning team. A winning team. Exactly. So it's, it's different than just a club. Like we don't go out necessarily like, you know, to the union and Hey, do you want to come play hockey? It's like, we kind of, we already know who our team would be. And like, it's pretty structured. Absolutely. That's kind of how you guys have been able to have that success. And that was kind of the next place I wanted to take the interview, guys, is talk a little bit about the history of the club because, I mean, you guys have had a ton of success, uh, been able to compete against some really big teams. And, I mean, I've got some stats written down from, you know, the, the, the last season. But, man, it is just – it is impressive what you guys are able to do against some big competition. And so talk to us a little bit about the history of the club and about the success that has already, you know, been a part of – Weber State Hockey's DNA, and so now guys are coming in. They say, hey, we want to come and play. We've never been to Utah, but we know if you come play hockey at Weber State, you're probably going to win some games, and that's what we want to do. Yeah, I think I think it goes back to our coaches again. They're, they they won a lot when they played. They went to the, they went to nationals like three or four years when they were playing, and they I think because they've had success, they can bring that to the, the team. It's a winning atmosphere. Um, they're both very good hockey players as well. They – they understand the game well. Um, great recruiting too, because our coaches don't just stay in state. They'll go. We got players from Alaska. We got players from like Russia. We have players from Canada. We have players from all over the world. They will come. That's because of our coaches and the recruiting process as well. So we have a, we always have good talent on our team, and we always have good coaching to go with it. So with that, you you're gonna win games no matter what. And and like Andy was saying, I think our the club was started about 30 years ago. And ever since then, there's always been someone involved that was there from the beginning. And so that's another thing. I think we got like pretty long. I don't even know what the word would be long, almost a legacy in a way with a lot of people around here. And like, I mean, as far as like fans go, you know, there's people that have been coming to games for 15 years. They just love it. And I think the last time we were at nationals was 2014. So it's been a little bit of a skid for us, but I, as far as I know, we've been to regionals every year I've been here and I'm going into my senior year now. So we've, yeah. we've had a competitive team. We just haven't been able to get over that last little hump, yeah. but I think this year could change because we have a lot of new recruits, a lot of high level players. Yeah. And like one of the guys, Cole, who was supposed to be on the podcast here with us, um, his dad played on the team. And he he's on the team now, so it's just like if you're if once you're a Weber State Wildcat, you stay a Wildcat. It's just like it's the way it is. He has a brother in the team. I had a brother in the team. It's just I don't know. It's a great place to come play, and I think it draws a lot of good people and good players here. It's an easy transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds like I mean, I mean, you guys mentioned that your brothers have played. Cole's father had played. I mean, so those are all family connections. But as part of that, you know, if you play hockey for Weber State. Uh, you get to join sort of this this family, like you said. I mean, a lot of guys have come through and played, and they stay loyal to the program. They want to support afterwards. So if you get involved with the club, even even just, you know, on the side, trying to help out the club however you can, you get to be part of, you know, this close-knit group of guys that are out there, you know, first and foremost having fun wearing the purple and white. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, think, I think so. I'm graduating this year, and I think that's going to be the hardest thing. Is It's not going to be not playing hockey. It's just going to be not being around teammates you know like you grow friendships for five i've been here for five years like you don't those don't grow on trees like i would go to i would go to bat for any one of my teammates no matter what situation they're in it's just 
it's just a great connection to have. And I think it's a great um, skill to have when you're going to the real world as well. Like being able to have that team chemistry and being able to work in a team like that, I think that's huge. I think a lot of like graduate schools look at that and think that's very important. So I think just like, yeah, all that is great, great team atmosphere as well. Emily, you've been quiet for a while. Questions for these guys? Um, yeah. So you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, you had a smaller graduating class this year, wasn't it? Just two, maybe three? Yep, two of us. Um, yeah. I mean, that still doesn't mean you're losing a good chunk of the success that has been Weber State Hockey for the last few years. How are you rebuilding or preparing without the presence of those two players for your upcoming season? Yeah. You can talk about Wolf over yeah. your brother. So, I mean, my brother, he he just graduated this year. He's done technically this year. So, I mean, he was like our leading scorer and like for the whole, I don't even know, what Four, is that? Franchise <laughs> history. Yeah, Seven like school years, history. He has. I mean, some stats there. Yeah. Your brother was fifth in the country last year in points at 66 points. That's everybody across yeah. the entire nation. As yeah. a defenseman, too, that's just, it's, it's, it's absurd. Yeah, it's really, it's that's impressive. Crazy. So, but Brian's just as good. Oh, Watch yeah. out for Brian Fober. It's absolutely yeah. insane. And he's pumping my tires, but I'll take it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so replacing a guy like that, and that's going to be really hard. But we have a lot of big recruits coming in. And we also lost one of our other seniors, Tom Simpson, who is also a really big piece for us. And it, it's hard to replace those guys, but, you know, we kind of have to just get through it. And, you know, some things will be different. But I think, like, because like you said, we have 25 or 24 returning guys. So we already have that one year of chemistry built, you know, everyone likes each other. It, it helps a lot. And so like, I'm, I'm not too worried yeah. going into this year. I think we'll be better than last year. And we were kind of injury plagued last year, lost quite a few guys to knee injuries, really. Yeah. Solely <laughs> but, knee injuries. Solely knee injuries. So as far as this upcoming year, I think we're just going to be better, stronger mm -hmm. and, you know, basically the same team and, as uh, Colby was saying, we had pretty good success last year, so I think we'll be able to go much further this year. Yeah, I mean, in terms of points, you guys had three in the top 20 in the nation last year. Mm -hmm. Nobody else had more than two. So yeah. That just kind of shows how deep and talented this team is. Exactly. Yeah. Simon, what about you? Any other questions for these guys? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of my favorite things about Weaver State Hockey – games and this is one of them right here is the shirt actually is um the merchandise there obviously you guys are a club sport and so one of those things that you have to do is be able to find some ways to fund that club and everything and i remember like i've seen it at a lot of games on um, the jersey auction can you kind of go into the idea behind that and when did that kind of start and what does that kind of do for your program and everything yeah i don't know i don't know when it started exactly but when i was here i think my second year we had um a sponsorship from intermountain so they, they paid for jerseys. So we, Brian did this last year for our military, but we, we order jerseys, customize them ourselves. And then they get here, we wear them during the game. So we'll have a breast cancer awareness night or a military appreciation night. We'll wear them the game. And then those jerseys will be auctioned off, every one of them. And proceeds will go to either, this year we did Utah Warriors hockey. And then last year we did, or during the breast cancer, we did um, Intermountain Breast Cancer. So. It's a great way to – that funds the club a little bit, but most of those proceeds go to um, foundations. So, yeah. And so um, it's it's a great way to give back to the community because we, we obviously have a great fan base. So if we're able to give back a little bit, it's always it's always very, very good. So, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's cool. I didn't know that it was going to charities too. I thought a lot of it was going to that club funding, just kind of keep you guys rolling and – no, you guys are you guys are giving it out to a lot of great causes, so that's awesome to hear. Absolutely, but we got plenty like the one you're wearing. That one is all for us. So like anything we sell, as far as like our jerseys, not special auction jerseys, that's that keeps the club going for sure, mm -hmm. funding us that way. So you know, if you want a hat, t-shirt, yeah, go ahead. Come on, we could use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this year we're having, I think we have a ton of more merchandise than previous years. We got. We got beanies, we got hats, we got jerseys. Um, so if you come to games, we'll do jersey giveaways. We'll do hat give giveaways. So you might get a chance to get one of the jerseys he's wearing if you come to a game. Awesome. Nice. So, guys, I mean, 
like you said, most of most of that takes place at the at the at the game. You got to show up to the ice sheet, and then you'll have the opportunity to check out some of that merch. You know, you could potentially win some of that stuff. I mean, talk just a little bit about the schedule, man. I mean, because you guys, uh, it's sort of broken up into two parts, right? Like there's sort of like the September October part of the schedule, maybe a little bit in November, and then stop for the holidays, then back at it in January February, and then you guys go into playoffs. I mean. Talk to us a little yeah. bit about how it, how it's like set up and how you guys go about setting it up, right? Because I think you guys pretty much have to build the schedule, right? You have to set mm -hmm. those things up and say, all right, we're going to go play these guys. We're going to play these guys. How's it work? So at the beginning of the year, our coach, one of our head coaches, Yosh, he he has con he's been around for twenty years. He's one of the long tenured guys, so he has connections to every team that we play. So they'll email back and forth, setting up games. Um, setting up tournaments so we'll do showcases for game weekends but for us we have a pretty intense schedule we play pretty much every weekend two or three games a weekend for starting in september going till mid-november and then the break and then we're starting back up january every weekend we play two or three games all the way till march so it's pretty intense we have 15 home games this year so you you have a lot of opportunities to come watch us play and, and enjoy the game it's it is pretty intense, especially with setting up games and stuff. But me and Brian don't have to deal with that as much. Yeah, we don't necessarily have to set up the schedule. But one of the things we have to look at is like it's a little different. Like so we have to deal with strength of schedule like quite a bit. So if we were playing weaker teams the whole time and like we win every game, we still might not make regionals. So that's where like kind of the real work comes in. So Montana, that's why we have to go on all these trips to play better schools and like you know, stronger teams. Cause if we're playing weak teams, they just kind of push us to the side. And I think that's another reason we've been so credible and like kind of a part of this, like what we play in is called the ACHA. And so that's how we've been able to maintain staying go to regionals and, you know, keeping a good name because we're competing at a higher level than a lot of schools. So that's kind of the hard part with the schedule for sure. Making sure we get the right teams in there. Yeah, man, I mean, it makes sense, too, right? Because it's, you know, it's just like any other sport. I mean, if your schedule's weak, um, when it becomes playoff time, maybe they're not as keen about yep. bringing you in, you know? Because it can definitely hurt you. Yeah, right? I mean, we had this same conversation on Monday night talking about the football team. Football team loses the game against JMU, and so they go get a D2 team. Come playoff time, will that matter? I don't know. We'll see. But it's the same exactly. thing with you guys as well. Yep, same idea, exactly. So we got to make sure we're playing the best of the best as much as we can. Yeah, and our coaches do a great job of figuring out. Like, he, he's got the algorithm down to a T. He, he knows when we're playing, who we're playing, <laughs> what points we're going to get, how many goals we need to score by. It's insane. He, he's, a, he's a hockey freak. <laughs> That's great. So, so oh, I, sorry. Um, so you guys said you belong to the ACHA. Is that – the club hockey as a whole like for all universities across the u.s or is that like a conference nope so the acha is like that so ncaa like acha is like the whole country and then there's different divisions so we're like in the mountain division and then there's like west central southeast like all these other places that have schools like there's more acha teams than d1 teams as far as like ncaa goes because like hockey is a really expensive sport and being able to maintain it for a school is like, you gotta have a lot of money. And obviously like football, that's a pretty expensive sport too. So for like Weber State, it's it'd be pretty hard to maintain both of those. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're in like the ACHA. And so those teams you play, do you think, um, cause I know you guys play like Montana, Montana State, Northern Colorado, playing teams that still belong to the big sky. Do you think that rivalry carries from the NCAA to the ACHA? I think so. I think knowing that we're in the same conference and like those are those are all competitive teams as well. They they always put out a good team each year. So being able to play them and it's always it's always good. And I think it does carry over a little bit. I think in state is the most competitive though and most the most rivalry we have. But it does help like if the team we're playing is like Montana State, people will know the name and they'll want to come watch. Exactly. So it definitely helps playing teams that are in the big sky as well, because people have some sort of affiliation to it. 
you know, opposed to playing like Grand Canyon, like, you know, people don't really know them as much. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Although we are grateful to Grand Canyon for, uh, softball. Uh, for, well, yeah, softball, but also I was going to say Isaiah Brown. Uh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> Love our guy, man. <laughs> Put it up in Europe this year. Um, all right, guys. I, Emily, that was actually my question, so I'm really glad that you asked that about the ACHA, kind of how it works, right? It was like, oh, okay, sweet. Like, it's kind of this big, broad thing, and that's that's where I was able to kind of pull some statistics for, you know, what what goes on in some of those games. And so you guys have emphasized a lot that, hey, you can come and show up to some of these, but you guys also travel a fair bit as well. And people can watch those online, right? Like, you guys stream a lot of those games. And uh, one of the last things I wanted to talk to you about was that kind of like uh, that media apparatus, right? Like, you guys have really, out of all the clubs that I've seen, easily the best media. Like, the social media is good. The videos that you guys produce are good. You're able to share those links so if people want to watch, they can on YouTube. Like, Talk to us about that and how you guys put that together because I think it's it's pretty slick and sophisticated um, for a club. Oh. You hear that? Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, how it really got big was one of our buddies, Brad Allen. He came to the school probably seven or eight years ago. And he was big into, like, film and videography and stuff. And he actually did stuff a lot with, like, the athletics department. But he got close with our team and really liked the guys. And he ended up starting to help us out a lot and doing all our media. So I give him a shout out for that. Like he does a tremendous job. It's, we couldn't do that without him. We we're not that good with a computer. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot to deal with besides that. And it's been good enough that this year we actually have a, an intern, somebody reached out to club sports and they wanted to do an internship with us as far as like social media, you know, digital marketing. marketing. So like now we're kind of like reaching out more in the school and that's that's really like brad is honestly to thank for all that yeah seriously and and i think this year um the girl that did come to us said video offer great all this stuff is very good you have a very good social media but people want to know the players it's impossible to see players under their cages we don't really post personal things like i see softball does a great job football does a great job of like really showing who personalities I think that's what our intern is going to do this year is going to, she's going to show personalities on the team that have never really been expressed before. So I think that's going to create a, a better fan base, especially for longevity for fans, knowing players, understanding, like maybe follow the points. Hope, hopefully they, you know, they stay with us for a long time. Have a little bit more of a personal attachment than just some guys wearing the Weber state stuff okay. out there on the ice. Yeah. I mean, it's a big part of what we've tried to do at Weber State weekly is the same thing, trying to help to help fans get to know the players and, like you said, kind of build that attachment, build the fan base. So we are 100% in line with what you guys are trying to do as well. And um, I think you're doing a great job, and I'm going to look forward to some of that content because I um, haven't been able to attend a Weber State hockey game yet, but getting to know you guys is a good time, right? So <laughs> yeah. Look forward and, to some of that good content. Yeah, you got, and you guys sure. do a great, great job too. Like it's – I follow you guys on all the social medias and it's seen you guys post it. It's really helpful. Like, especially cause I don't really follow volleyball. I don't really follow football, but when you guys post these updates and like what's going on, it's really, it's, it's helpful for me to like have more of a connection to the Weber state athletics as a whole. It's, I think it's great what you guys are doing. I think as you guys could grow this pretty big. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, speaking of sort of that crossover, right. Uh, I think one of the, one of the, I was at the UVU volleyball match last season we're sitting there. We're actually sitting behind Coach Coach Amicone and her husband, Mark. And so we're sitting there, we're watching the match, and then right behind us was you guys. You guys were <laughs> in force. Oh yeah, supporting the volleyball team. And so that's another thing I like about what you guys do is that like it's not just the like, hey, we're the hockey team, come see us all the time. Like, no, man, hockey team will show up to you know a volleyball match and get loud and and support and you know maybe boo UVU a little bit because. You know, like that's a that's a thing that you know. That's maybe a little rivalry that that could. Grow. Yeah, we right. we got we got a pretty good thing going. We went <laughs> we started bringing all of our buddies to the the basketball game. Oh man! And that was that was an absolute blast. We were we're right behind their bench, the opposing team's bench, and we're we're yelling at them the whole time. And <laughs> <laughs> they were not liking it. It was it was a it was so fun though. It was just being able to like 
bring our electricity to the different a different sport is <laughs> different I think it's atmosphere. Sweet. Yeah, I think we got in a little trouble though. Yeah, it might have been a little. Some, some people didn't like us being so loud, so <laughs> we had to tone it down. But no, that that's it's, it's all right. very fun. I think we need it in all our athletics. I think so yeah. too. Like, dude, the D needs to be loud, man. Like, it should yeah, be right. uncomfortable for teams to come in and play in the Purple Palace, man. Like. No. <laughs> As loud as possible. Like they exactly. should hate it. They should not want to come to the Purple Palace. That that was our mindset the that whole time. Wanted, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, after that, we had uh, Nick Downs reach out to us, and he wants to get involved in what we do as well. So hopefully this year we'll be maybe be posted on some of like the Weber State Destruction and Weber State Athletics. So I think he he's going to help us build a connection with them as well. That's right. Emily, you're saying hey, you guys ever come to us? What's that? <laughs> Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, if you guys, if we ever play SUU again in basketball, I will seriously like pay for your drinks and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that too loud. The whole team might show up. <laughs> yeah. and the we, we need them all because I, oh, I love getting, I love getting those SUU games again. The end of the <laughs> we'll be there. We'll, we will be there. We'll mark it on the calendar. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you guys have an opportunity this weekend. Volleyball is playing SUU for the one and only time this season. At Club Swenson, so I think it's on Friday night. So <laughs> what night is that? It's Friday night. So if you guys don't have a hockey game, go boo the birds, man. I'll right. be watching from home, but yeah, boo the birds. It's perfect. We got our training camp going on this weekend, so that'll be something to get all the boys out to and go. You know, show them what we can do, make a difference in the crowd. It'll be loud. Um, Simon or Emily, any remaining questions you guys have for Andy and Brian? I'm good. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, guys. I'm excited well, for the season. Yeah. Thanks yeah, so much man. for having us. Yeah, we really – I had a really good time chatting with you guys. Uh, like we said, make sure to go and follow them. I mean, you guys have a really good social media, so talk about your handles. You guys have a, a Facebook group where people can get updates, but also a Facebook page, really active on Twitter. Um, talk to us about your socials. Yeah, so we have Instagram, I think, is our biggest, and Facebook. So if you follow us at Weber State Hockey, it looks exactly like all the other athletics. It says hockey underneath. Same with Facebook, um, Twitter. And then, yeah, we stream all our games. I think we might be streaming through KSL this year. They wanted to reach out, and they're going to put a stream through for us. So every home game we'll stream, and first first and foremost, come out and watch. I think that's going to help us the most. Yeah. Yeah, show up, buy a ticket, be loud. It's good Absolutely. Time. Hockey's fun. It's a great time. Mm-hmm. A right? good time, promise. Any other things you guys want to shout out before we wrap up? I don't know. Someone would probably get mad, but I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well all right well Andy and brian we appreciate you guys taking a little bit of time to chat with us here on weaver state weekly about the hockey club about everything you guys got going on like we said there's a lot of good momentum a lot of good vibes to encourage wildcat fans to get out there schedule and uh show up to the ice sheet to root these guys on because it's a good time and uh, especially if, when utah state's in town make sure you show up for those matches oh yeah and the ice sheet's right on campus so it's easy to come over yeah, yep. A lot of people forget about that. Yeah. Yep. So, right by the D. Right by the Purple Palace. All right, right guys, by the Purple we'll, Palace. We'll, we'll wrap it up like we usually do. Appreciate you both. Um, we've got the same thing. Email, weberstateweekly at gmail.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon. We shout it out at the top of the show. Um, and then the blog, weberstateweekly.com. There's more content to be coming on that this season. Um, appreciate Andy and Brian for hanging out with us tonight. And, of course, to the signpost, Emily Miller and Simon Mortensen for hanging out. First time this season, guys, but looking forward to many, many more. Um, so we'll wrap it up like we usually do. Weber State, Weber State, great. Great, 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 great. great. <laughs> <laughs>